Have you ever woken up in the morning and felt no meaning, no purpose, and just tired of the daily grind, tired of the grind and the groundhog day of, of doing the same repetitive things over and over and over again? Then you're probably looking for more meaning. You're looking for something more in your life. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about how to bring your ikigai to life. Now, what's an ikigai? That's, that's a weird Japanese concept. And that actually means... It's your reason for being. So what's your reason for being? Because that will actually shape what you're doing and who you are day to day every, you know, in your life for the rest of your life. And that's what we're all here to do. We're all here to actually find our reasons for being. And the, the Ikigai concept uses a model. So if you Google Ikigai, it means, it has a meaning of, What's your reason for being? But the, the model that they use, we're going to expand upon that model and we're going to layer over and over new meaning to that model to actually help you to bring iki, your ikigai to life because it's trapped deep inside you. Now, without actually just going on and on and on with a rant, let's dive right in. So the ikigai, it's a Japanese concept, means reason for being. And this is the model that I'm talking about here. This model basically shows you it's it's a it's a series of four circles overlapping. So what the the ikigai model, the current ikigai model, describes is all the overlapping spheres and and how that relates to different areas of your life, and then trying to find that perfect balance, that harmony between where the different spheres overlap between what you love and what the world needs and what you can get paid for and what you're good at and how those things overlap that then describes you know what's your passion what's your vocation or your job what's your profession what you're really good at what do you get paid for and uh, what are you seen as an expert in and then what's your your passion in life so the ikigai concept this basically sums it up in a nutshell Obviously, there's more to it than that. There's a whole book. There's courses involved in how to, you know, live your ikigai and how to bring your ikigai to the surface. You know, and it's basically just how to bring more reason for being to the surface. So why am I talking about this? This because my name is Tino Beth. Uh, Fifteen years ago, I asked these questions myself, and I actually propelled myself to the edge of, um, you know, of life and death. Basically, that's that's been my journey to discover my reason for being, and my reason for being involved me being in a car accident, and I had this out of body experience where I was, you know, um, in the state of you know the world between life and death, white light room, and I actually got coached in that space about what's my reason for being, what's my reason for coming back, because at that point. It was a it was a touch and go sort of situation. Anyway, um, so in, in the end, I found my reason in this white light space, and then from there I came back. And part of what I'm going to teach you today is, you know, the culmination of 15 years of journeying to discover, you know, more reason in my life, and also to, to shine a light on how you can find more reason for being in your life. So this is the, the concept, this is the model. We, we're actually going to overlay another layer of meaning onto this, onto this model. And it's, it's using the same structure. It's the same structure, but what we're going to be focusing on is the outlines, the actual lines on the circles and the circles themselves, because they have significant meaning when you actually break it down and break it apart. Um, and also, I've actually come across a crop circle. So this is a crop circle that I came across uh, probably about three or four years ago now. And this crop circle, I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh my God, this describes the circle of life. This describes karma and cause and effect. And if you, you know, I'll explain how it does that. But basically, this is the same Ikigai image, um, but it's actually more complete. As you can see, there's a circle that goes around all the other circles and then there's also with embedded within there's a is this um, resonance pattern and that pattern that resonance pattern that points to us 
being in a state of, you know, ultimate meaning and purpose and, and just being high on life and just doing the thing that you love without even thinking about it. And that resonance then is then the resonance with your highest purpose. So let's continue on the journey. Basically, the crop circle I decoded, I discovered within the, 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 the larger circle, there's four small circles and they describe the four seasons and these um and the the actual dance between you know light and dark and that's what we're doing every day when we go to sleep and when we wake up in the morning that's what we do we're dancing between light and dark and that's what we've done in this lifetime if you see this um our whole life as a journey and that's what we're going to be doing we um we come from the dark and we awaken into the light and then we return back into the dark which ironically then is another white light room some white light white light space so that's sort of the the um the resonance that describes the resonance as well this this inner double s figure i suppose it could be um, looked at as but it's more like a 3d um, dna sort of structure that we're looking at here and it's the resonance of life so making sure that you're in resonance with your own meaning with your own life so now we come to the outer circle what's the outer circle all about in this journey and that's the hero's journey that you're on that's from beginning all the way to the end that's the hero's journey that's your life your whole life and that's what ikigai is that's what it's all about it's about finding meaning in your life and whether you find that meaning, you know, early in your life and you live it throughout your whole life or you find it later in life and you live it from your later part of life, it doesn't matter, you know, as long as that you find meaning and you find that joy and you go on to live, you know, your life how you want to live it and you're not scared and afraid of doing that. And that's what I find most people are doing, you know, are in that situation where they're stuck in the nine to five, there's pressure left, right and center. And they feel afraid that if they're going to step out and go on the adventure, go on one of life's great adventures, and this is an example of life's great adventures. And um, if you want to learn more about this, we've got programs about this, but there's also Joseph Campbell. He's uh, um, one of the world's leading experts in um, myths and mythology and how the hero's journey is told through story in all different cultures around the world. And that's what this is. And we're basically here to live out our story, discover who we are, and find our bliss. And that's what this is all about. So the 12 steps of Life's Great Adventures, in a nutshell, these are the 12 steps. A call to adventure. That's when you hear a call and you have like, oh my God, i got to get going. i got to do something. But then you feel that threshold of resistance, which is that critical thinking. And it's also figuring out what, what if this is the right move for you to make. Um, because you can take action and you know do different stuff without thinking about it and so your critical thinking faculties are hugely important to develop and cultivate and then to use in life and beyond that now you're reaching the threshold of no return and this is the actual threshold to your adventure and this is what I described earlier about the fear the fear of going out and doing the unknown into the unknown doing the adventure going on your journey and that's where most people, they hit that wall and go, well, it's, it's too hard. You know, there's a lot of resistance internally. And because they feel that internally, then they go, it's too hard. And then they step back. They ignore their call to adventure. And, you know, and inevitably they find themselves in the Groundhog Day, you know, the nine to five and sort of just perpetuating the same sort of habits and, um, you know, dissatisfi dissatisfaction in life. Um, as we continue, as if you pass the threshold of no return, then you're actually on the journey, and you actually find your feet in the road of trials, and you're you're faced with all these different tests and obstacles, and then you you meet a lot of helpers and mentors along the way, and they'll help to guide you and to point you in the right direction if you lose track of your own path. Um, again, remember this is your path that you're following, and it's not necessarily it hasn't been created so this is the actual the the mindset to take you there this is the the um you know the the theory behind finding your path finding your ikigai 
And um, if you do this correctly, if you do your hero's journey and go full circle on the adventure, then you actually get to experience you know, more adventures, more fulfillment because you've fulfilled the journey. And, um, you know, and then that leads you to more meaning. So then you have overcome challenges as we get back to the journey. We just took a sidetrack. And, um, and then there's different temptations you'll meet along the way when you actually reach the abyss or the belly of the whale or feeling this overwhelm or just complete immersement into your journey. You're like, oh my God, this is bliss. I can just stay here forever. I don't need to return. I don't need to like do much more. I can just do this forever. But it's important to keep going because that's where the real gifts are on this transformational journey. And that's what you'll come across next is that, oh my God, you will have transformed to a different person now that you have um, com- you know, continued on the journey. And, um, and then you'll find that there's some time for atonements. You need to um, actually reconcile who you were, who you're becoming, who you're going to be. And um, that's, you know, that's that stage in the journey and realizing that you've gained some gifts and, and knowledge and understanding and wisdom about who you are and, and also tangible stuff. You might have a story to tell. You might have invented something new because of the problems you see and you faced out in the world and you've overcome. And then the threshold of return is is the um, second last stage in the journey. And that's when you actually have to return to the place where you've begun the journey and figuring out how you've changed. And it's also this sort of sobering up of the journey and returning to the known world, the world that you were originally a part of, and then bringing your gifts to that world and sharing those gifts. And that's when you create a new base level of what you would call home, even possibly a new physical home, that's how a lot of these things happen, and um, you manifest a new house, you manifest abundance because you've gone on the journey, you've developed your gifts, and you've shared them with the world that's hungry for your your gifts. So um, yeah, and you create new homes, um, you create your own new home, it's bigger and better, and, um, and then that just allows you to go on bigger and better journeys. So... That's pretty much how the hero's journey works, and that's how the the sequence of events happens in the finding your ikigai. But we can break it down even further because the ikigai model encompasses four different circles within it, and those four, four circles um, within those four circles. Well, we've covered this bit. <laughs> within the four circles are the four seasons of life, so. That's where we are here. That's where, you know, as a, as a child, you're born into this world and, you know, everything's just booming. You're growing so fast. It's spring. That's springtime. You're in childhood and adolescence. You're learning at a huge, rapid rate. And eventually you come to the point where you're stepping out into the unknown on your own. You don't have the, the support of your parents anymore. And you're reaching a, a level of adulthood and maturity and that's when you actually face obstacles and challenges in your life and you know and this is a summer period this is a peak peak time in your life and it you know um, it transcends for you you're you're able to grow grow into the person that you are and then as we transition into the autumn phase of our life we we realize that we've past our physical peaks, you know, we might notice that the body is starting to stiffen and we need to do more stretching, more yoga and more exercise practice. And, but we also realize that we've developed inner, um, inner capabilities. So that's where autumn comes in. It's also when fruits of our harvest are ready. So the fruits of the, the two seasons before then, those fruits will be ready to be harvested. There'll be an abundance there. And the quicker you can, um, you know, integrate these cycles into your life, these seasons into your life, actually the quicker the, the fruits and the abundance and the harvest will, will, will come. For some people it happens quicker than others. And, um, but then they're also still faced with the prospect of finding their ikigai because abundance in um, financial terms isn't everything. And it's more like a life satisfaction. That's what we're after here. And... You know, ideally, we're looking for both, both that overlap 
and that's what this model is all about. And um, and that brings it home to winter, and it's the full sharing, the the grandmother, the grandfather um, aspect of this work, and that's when you're really there just to give back and just to um, enjoy. So and um, so the the four seasons of life here we've gone through them and and this slideshow I don't know why I built a little slideshow presentation just because um you know I'm nervous about putting myself in front of the camera so the four seasons here are sort of spelled out and um you know spring summer autumn winter that sort of takes us through the seasons and those seasons are all individual heroes journeys so they make up individual heroes journeys in our life and you'll feel um i mean you might feel a, a very different sort of journey when you pass your adolescence and you now have to go into the workforce it's a completely different journey that you're on so um just as an example so which sort of brings us full circle to the ikigai thing and um and i want to just touch upon real quick and um and point you into the direction of these lines here in the ikigai process or in the actual the crop circle image we have um we have all these lines that overlap so we have spring for example most of us are in summer let's just pick summer so if we um if we're on our journey here this is our life journey this is our whole life journey and um and then we enter the summer journey the summer stage of our life and this is a mini hero's journey in a big hero's journey, which is our life. And um, and as we um, cross over into these different areas, you know, these different seasons, you know, like if we imagine this is like a road that we're walking on, and it's not going to be like a perfect sphere, like circle like this is, but, um, you know, there'll be windy turns and dips and stuff like that. But as we transition between these different seasons we're actually communicating with our future selves we're planting seeds for the next season for the next journey to come so as we um make this crossing here we're inputting seeds of hope into the autumn journey which hasn't happened yet and we're also then continuing on and we're putting inputting seeds of hope you know that have a longer gestation period into the winter season of our life and as we transition we then start to receive obviously we're receiving all the time as well as we're um, giving we're inputting um, we're receiving the seeds from the spring journey that we had already been on so the spring was inputting into um, our summer so we're actually then receiving the gifts from our own giving in which you know makes up our entire life and which creates that whole karmic cause and effect sort of scenario in terms of input inputting into our future selves and then that input has a direct um, effect on who we become currently and who we are in the future so i just wanted to share that real quick and um that's sort of the the ikigai how to bring more ikigai into your life small version of the of the video if you want to learn more about what we're doing um, with the new age hero movement then jump onto newagehero.com and um, you know enter in your details and you know you explore the opportunities there are to actually become the hero of your life and to explore and to journey and to and to really realize that life is a journey and it's filled with lots of mini journeys and they all have their different struggles and, and trials and tribulations and, and successes. And, and there's all these different helpers and mentors along the way. And this is really just a roadmap to help you um, figure out how you can you know, live your life in the state of Ikigai. To be in a state of having more meaning and, um, you know, and just you know, be blissful all day long. Find your bliss, live your bliss and share it with everyone else. So... Until we meet again, uh, this is Tino Beth signing out. I hope this is uh, educational and check out what we're doing at newagehero.com.